Okay, now we're going to talk about the uh, chassis itself, the metal parts, and how to put a finish on those. The uh, chassis plate itself uh, has a brush finish on it by yours truly. I actually brush every one of these myself. Uh, and uh, a lot of people use it like that. I kind of like it, it's a little different. Uh, but if you don't like it, you can certainly paint it. And the nice thing about the brush job is that has pre-roughened it. So it's ready to go. You don't need to do any kind of sanding or anything to put some texture or a little tooth on there for your finish to grab onto. Uh, the other part you'll probably want to paint is the chassis, bell, transformer cover, whatever you want to call it. Uh, these guys are made from raw steel and they're given a protective coating, which is not done for beauty. It's, you can see it's kind of a gooey, waxy, varnishy stuff that leaves some brown spots on some of the, the bells. Uh, and the easiest way to, to address that is to use something to, that's a, a degreaser. And I use acetone. Uh, you could use lacquer thinner, would work okay. I probably would tend to stay away from, from things like mineral spirits because they tend to leave a little bit of stuff on the surface, whereas acetone and lacquer thinner really take it off. Acetone is like, pretty aggressive so it's good stuff uh, for that but you do need to be careful with it have good ventilation and you want to wear gloves I don't have the ideal gloves for acetone which are uh, latex gloves that that's the most resistant to acetone I'm just wearing good old platex Dexter's mom kind of gloves here uh, because that's what's around today but I'm gonna work pretty fast so I'm not too concerned I'm just gonna get some acetone on a rag and start working on that finish and keep going until it seems like it's pretty well cleaned off and the rag is sliding over it without feeling sticky at all. When you do this, make sure you really get it tight into the corners so that you don't have anything underneath your paint finish still on there, any of this coating. You can't, you can't rub too much on this. Go all the way around. And once I'm into this state, I'm pretty much ready for any way I might want to finish this. If you want to get experimental, you could try just uh, hitting that with some steel wool to polish it up a little bit. If you want to get crazy, you could put it on a polishing wheel. You could shoot that with a clear finish. You have to get something on here. It's raw steel and it will rust. So definitely get a finish on this. This guy, we're just gonna do the same paint that I'm gonna shoot on the chassis today, which I'll be talking about in a minute. But before I do that, I wanna have the same kind of tooth rough finish for the paint to help adhere. So I'm gonna take a little, good old 220 grit, that's what we had around here today. And I'm just gonna rough this up a little bit. It doesn't have to be super aggressive. Just get a little tooth on everything. Kind of start at the top. I'm gonna to kind of start at the top, work my way down so I make sure that I get it on all the surfaces. Work around the corners, make sure you get a little texture on the corners. The paint we're putting on, you don't need to worry about it looking like a, a super polished finish. The paint is gonna fill in all of this bit of grain that we're adding to the surface. Okay, and then just to help clean off any of the little bit of uh, grit we may have left on there, I'm just going to give that a real quick wipe again with acetone. That's cleaned up and ready to paint. And now I'm going to also do the degreasing treatment on my aluminum chassis panel. don't want to leave this step out just even your own fingerprints can create a problem for the paint in terms of adhering so once you get it done don't pick it up barehanded if you do try and pick it up by the edges although we're gonna paint make sure we get paint on the edges so you want to hit those with the acetone as well okay we have our parts nice and clean, and now we're gonna take them outside to shoot some paint. 
Okay, we've moved outside uh, to shoot this spray. Um, conditions are not perfect out here today. It's a spring day. It's a little cooler than you usually want to spray. You usually want it to be at least 65 degrees. It's about 55 degrees out here today. So I may not get the best finish in the world, but that's okay. We just want you to see how this goes on. You'll also notice I'm not wearing a, a, a respirator. You really should wear one of these. I'm just going to do this for clarity. It's kind of noisy out here and uh, we want you to be able to hear what I'm saying. So um, I'll hold my breath. Okay, we have our two pieces out here and if you look at them on the table, I've masked the table off to keep it from getting spray paint, obviously. And you'll also notice that these pieces are raised up off the surface. I just put some little pieces of plastic under there to hold them up. That's gonna allow me to spray around the edges of things and it won't get glued to the table. We can just lift them off when they're dry. Now, the paint that I'm using is probably the most popular stuff for our kit builders. And it's because it's really easy to put on and it looks really cool. It's got a real retro vibe to it. It's, it's a hammered finish paint. This one is Rust-Oleum Universal. There is, of course, uh, Hammerite is the original one. Uh, there's maybe some other ones around too. You don't have to do this. You can powder coat if you're into that, if you've learned about it. I do DIY powder coats, a lot of fun. Take some equipment to get set up, but it's not terribly expensive and the results are, are, are really fun. Uh, you can just leave the chassis panel naked, as I said. Uh, you could try bluing the bell end. That's a fun thing to do. Uh, you can go to a place where they sell gun bluing supplies and pick up the materials for that. It's, it's not too tough to do, not too expensive. Anyway, we're gonna do hammerite because that's what looks really cool and we really like. So, temperature is, uh, as I say, not ideal. We have just a little bit of breeze out here, which is not ideal. It's probably better to do these things indoors. Uh, if you can and if you have the proper ventilation. But we'll make a go of this. So I'm gonna really shake my can well. I've been shaking it for a while before we got going. And before we even touch this stuff, I wanna talk a little bit about spraying. When you spray stuff with a rattle can or a spray gun, one of the rules is you start off the piece, you spray across at a consistent speed and a consistent distance, and you let go after you get off the piece. Otherwise, if you start spraying right here and then spraying right here, you're gonna get big blobs of paint on there. You don't wanna do that. So we're gonna do just a nice, easy spray like that. This paint's a little funky. It's spitting a little bit, but with Hammerite, luckily, that's not too critical an issue because it's a hammered textured finish. Okay, I'm gonna start on the little bell end here because it's a little bit easier to do. And what I'm gonna do is spray around at a lower angle to make sure I get into these sides. And then we'll go back and start doing the top. And you'll notice that I, on each of these pieces, I'm going to kind of work my way around the table to do them. That's really the best way to go about it, to get an even coating everywhere. The first coat just needs to be a mist coat. It needs to be cover about half of the metal, 50% coat, it's also called. You don't not want to build it a whole lot. We're going to do that. We're going to wait a few minutes. Then we're going to do another coat about the same, maybe slightly heavier. And then we're gonna finish with a heavy, medium heavy coat. And that's the one that we wanna lay on and make sure that we have enough build that the, we'll get a nice hammered texture. So here we go with the first shot. Starting off the work, across, off the work, across, let off. Gonna come around the table. Just like that. We're gonna let that sit a little bit. We'll come over to the big panel. Start off the work. And I'm gonna do my first shot low around the edge. Then I'm gonna come up, overlapping about 50% on these, like so. And I'm gonna come around and do it from this angle. You'll notice I'm keeping the can pretty far away. You probably want to keep it at least a foot away from the surface. I'm going to give a little shot along this edge just to get some coat on there and another little shot. Okay, we're going to let that sit a few minutes and then we'll come back to it and put our second coat on. I've, I've waited a couple, three minutes. It doesn't have to get super dry between the first and second coat. So I'm going to go ahead and do exactly the same thing and just build a little more of the paint on the surface without going crazy. So here we go. Okay, I'm 
we get our big panel. Again, getting a low angle on the first shot so we get the edge. I'm just gonna go around it this time, make sure I get those edges on the second run, and then we'll go over the top. Okay, now we'll do one full pass over the top with the second coat. Breeze is making this a little challenging, but uh, I think we'll pull it off. Okay, we're gonna wait a few more minutes and then we'll hit that final coat on there. Okay, we're gonna do our final coat on this, which is a, kind of critical uh, in that you wanna be, try and be real consistent on how much you lay on. You don't wanna go crazy, but you wanna make sure you get good full coverage on here. So, same process as before, just lay on a little bit more. Here we go. This time on that bell end, I'm gonna go over the top a little higher to make sure I get a good coverage on the top of the bell, since that's the thing we're really gonna look at. <clears throat> okay, the bell's been easy to shoot. The uh, Chassis panels give me a little more challenge today because of the temperature, so I'm going to make sure I get enough on there to get a good coverage. We're already getting a really nice hammer on the on the bell with that heavy coat. It's just popping right out. It's going to look pretty good. Here we go. Okay, there's one side, and again, I'm going to do this from a couple angles. Sometimes you'll see what looks like little fish eyes, little places where you can see the metal through popping up. Those usually level out as it sits and dries, so don't be too concerned about that. If you don't get enough build on these, on the final coat, what's gonna happen is you're, you're gonna get a real fine textured finish. And you can actually do that by building a whole bunch of mist coats if you don't want that real heavy hammer texture. But I like the hammer texture, so I'm gonna lay it on there. I'm gonna get a little more along this edge just to make sure. And I think we're good. So what you wanna do now is just let these sit and get dry. And the thing about hammerite is it cures pretty slowly. Really the very best technique with this stuff is let it sit for at least a week and actually, if you let it sit for two or three weeks, you're gonna be guaranteed that it's not gonna break up and chip up on you when you're working on it. If you're in a hurry, you can bake it to accelerate the polymerization process, but be a little careful. Don't, don't put it in a real hot oven to try and speed up the process. Probably keep it at 200 degrees or below, and I wouldn't leave it in there for more than about 20 minutes or half an hour. Um, if you go too far, we have found that it actually gets too brittle and it'll start to crack sometimes. So um, use a little caution on that. And there you go. That's how you do a, a paint job on bottlehead chassis panels. Pretty simple. <laughs>